So let's get started. Um, so welcome to uh, today's webinar. We're going to be talking about uh, self-compassion, uh, particularly after a relapse. So this is a very informal webinar. It's not going to be too content heavy. Um, I wanted to focus more on us doing some exercises instead of reading a lot of content on the screen. Um, it is going to be a little bit shorter than our normal hour long webinars. So it's going to be around 30 minutes long. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys are ready. So I'm just going to share my screen. Okay. Okay. So as I mentioned, today we're going to be talking about cultivating self-compassion after a relapse. So it's going to be very uh, focused on doing mindfulness exercises. So just to give an overview of what we're going to be looking at. Um, so we're going to look at relapse and strong emotions. We're going to be talking about actually what is self-compassion. And we're going to be doing two mindfulness exercises. And then at the end, um, if obviously there is enough time, we can do a Q&A session. So I will not be looking at the chat box um, during the actual session. I want to focus on um, the exercises and, and you. And then when we're done, then I'll go through the chat to see if there are any questions. Okay. So what can we expect from this webinar? So this webinar is going to offer you a hands-on experience of what self-compassion truly feels like um, in practice. And we are going to delve into the importance of self-compassion in managing the emotional aftermath of a relapse. So providing you with practical tools to build resilience and maintain a positive mindset as you continue your recovery journey. And remember, relapses are a common part of the healing process. So yes, we want to build our skill set so they don't occur. However, if and when they do, we also want to ensure that you have the resilience and the skills to get you through it. Okay. So for various reasons, including cultural norms and expectations, not everyone is familiar with or already practices self-compassion. And we'll briefly go into this a little later on in the session. So for now, sit back and get comfortable and let's get exploring. So relapses can be deeply challenging, often triggering feelings of guilt, shame and self-criticism. However, experiencing a relapse does not mean failure. It is a natural part of the recovery process. So we can expect them to occur. Understanding how to navigate these setbacks with, with kindness and self-compassion can significantly impact your journey towards healing. So what is a relapse? A relapse is a return to previous behaviors after a period of improvement. This might mean engaging in skin picking after a period of abstinence or just reduce uh, in, in behavior. And these behaviors can be persistent and difficult to manage, often resulting in feelings of failure and self-blame. And then this can you know, create a cycle um, and inhibit um, recovery. There are common emotional responses that um, we can get after a relapse. So relapses often bring up intense emotions. So you might uh, find that these may be familiar to you. So these feelings can be overwhelming and lead to a negative self view. So one of them can be guilt. So feeling responsible for the relapse, believing that you have let yourself or even others down, um, we can feel shame. You may be internalizing the behavior as a reflection of your worth. So you may be thinking I am a failure or I am weak. We may be um, experiencing embarrassment. So worrying about others noticing or judging the behavior or your perceived failure. Um, and even sometimes we can feel disgust. So you may even feel repulsed by your actions or your appearance due to the physical effects of, of picking or pulling. So what is the possible impact of these feelings? Uh, these emotions can significantly affect your mental health, leading to increased anxiety, depression, 
and a sense of hopelessness and may even increase um, the reoccurrence um, of your picking. So if not addressed, they can create a cycle of negative self-talk and behavior, obviously then hindering your recovery. So now what? So now that we know what a relapse is and how some of the common emotions like guilt, shame and embarrassment and others can hinder our progress towards recovery, what can we do now? So let's have a look at self-compassion. So what is self-compassion? It involves treating yourself with the same kindness and understanding you would offer a friend or a loved one in a similar situation. So self-compassion is an essential tool in overcoming the negative emotions associated with relapse. So let's take a moment um, just to reflect and think about within your culture or your society, or wherever you are in the world, uh, what does others think about self-compassion? And just for a little quick um, discovery, I've created a poll for us. So I've just placed it on the screen for you. So how does society view self-compassion? Um, It is often seen as a weakness. Um, it could be seen as selfish or indulgent. Um, it could be seen as maybe misunderstood, but important for mental health. Um, it's viewed positively and often practiced. So I'd love to hear um, what everyone thinks. So we'll give that a few, few moments for everyone to answer and I'll share the results with you. So in some societies, you know, self-compassion can be seen as airy-fairy or touchy-feely or indulgent um, or even just unscientific um, or selfish. I mean, the, the actual word self is within the, the phrase, so it could be seen as selfish. Um, but it's actually a, a very well-researched approach for significant benefits for mental health. So... Let's see if I can share this with everyone. Okay, share results. So it looks like the majority, 46% uh, is it's often seen as a weakness um, tied with it's misunderstood but important for mental health. So, uh, and then 31% say it's seen as selfish or indulgent. And then only 8%, it's viewed positively and often practiced. So again, um, having these types of discussions, having these types of uh, webinars, we hope to um, destigmatize um, things like, like self-compassion uh, so we can take away that, that, that negative uh, outlook um, on self-compassion. So that was very interesting. Thank you for participating. So uh, what are the benefits of self-compassion? So it can reduce negative emotions and helps in dealing with stress and setbacks more effectively. Um, it can encourage resilience, making it easier to bounce back after a relapse. It fosters a healthier, more sustainable recovery process by promoting a positive and more nurturing mindset. Self-compassion is linked to more motivation so you become less afraid of failure. You are less scared now about failure and thus will continue to keep trying. You take more responsibility for personal mistakes and increased motivation to try and repair things. And it's linked to healthier behaviors. It is not self-indulgent. Okay. So there's, there's quite a lot of benefits to um, uh, you know, cultivating self-compassion. So what, is it, what does self-compassion mean? So there are three components to self-compassion. Um, there's self-kindness, common humanity, and mindfulness. So we'll go into these a little bit uh, in, in more detail. So self-kindness, that is treating yourself with compassion. 
So what does it mean? So it's being warm and understanding toward yourself when you suffer, fail, or feel inadequate, rather than ignoring your pain or being self-critical. So self-kindness involves treating yourself with the same understanding and care that you would offer a close friend um, going through a tough time. So after a relapse, it's easy to fall into harsh self-criticism, uh, thinking things like, I should have been stronger or I failed again. Uh, Self-kindness encourages you to counter these thoughts with gentleness. Um, so for example, instead of criticizing and demolishing yourself by saying, I should have been stronger or I'm a failure, you might say, uh, again, with self-compassion, I'm going through something really difficult and it's okay to struggle. I can offer myself the compassion I need to move forward. So this shift in perspective helps you build a more supportive inner dialogue, which is crucial for long-term healing. And we'll go into a few more examples a little bit later on in the, the session. So the second component of self-compassion is common humanity. So this means understanding that you're not alone. So recognizing that suffering and setbacks are part of the shared human experience. Um, the fact that we are alive and human beings, it means that we, that we uh, all suffer. So when you experience a skin picking relapse, it can feel isolating as though you're the only one who struggles in, you know, in this way. But common humanity reminds us that many others face similar challenges and that you're not alone in your experiences. So this awareness can be incredibly comforting, helping to reduce feelings of, of shame and isolation. It's about realizing that relapses happen to many people dealing with skin picking. It's part of the journey and I'm not alone in this. Okay, so it's part of that a common human experience. So again, um, feeling alone or isolated. So we can say um, in this scenario, I'm probably the only one who can't stop pulling or others are progressing through the program, but I'm just stuck or even no one will ever understand what I'm going through. So when we have a togetherness, common humanity sort of perspective, we can say relapses happen to many people dealing with um, skin picking or hair pulling. It's part of the journey and I'm not alone in this. Or even, you know, everyone has their ups and downs. I am just experiencing a down right now, but I will get up again. So it's just reframing um, uh, our self-talk and our mindset. The third component of self-compassion is mindfulness. So it's observing your emotions without judgment. So it's taking a balanced approach to negative emotions so that feelings are neither suppressed nor exaggerated. So this means mindfulness is about being fully present and aware of what you're feeling in the moment without trying to suppress or deny those emotions. So when you experience a skin picking relapse, it's natural to feel overwhelmed by emotions like guilt, shame, or frustration. So in our example, um, again, mindfulness allows you to observe these emotions without being swept away by them. So instead of getting caught up in a cycle of self-criticism uh, self or catastrophizing, mindfulness helps you recognize your feelings for what they are. They're temporary and manageable, okay? So without mindfulness, the response to a relapse might look like this. Um, I can't believe I did this again. I'm so weak and I can't control myself. I always mess up and this just proves that I'll never get better. So that's having that self-critical um, mindset. So in this, in this scenario, the individual is caught in a cycle of self-criticism, letting the feelings of disappointment and frustration define their self-worth. So the emotions are overwhelming and there's no sense of stepping back to observe or manage them. They're all consuming and they can lead to a downward spiral of negative thinking. And we know what that happens. It creates just more negative um, and destructive behaviors. But with mindfulness, the approach might be more like this. 
I notice that I'm feeling really upset. So you're acknowledging what you're feeling. This is tough and I'm disappointed in myself, but I know that this feeling will pass. It's just one part of my experience, not the whole story, and it's not who I am. So it's removing yourself from that, that negative feeling, um, and it's not making a, um, you, you're not identifying your self-worth, you know, with it. So here, mindfulness allows the person to recognize and name their emotions without becoming overwhelmed by them. They acknowledge the disappointment, but they don't let it define the overall self-worth, creating a space for understanding and self-compassion. So now we're going to do our first exercise. So um, this exercise is going to simulate simple physical gestures of what the lack of self-compassion can feel like. And then what it can uh, what it can feel like by focusing on the three components of self-compassion. Again, a reminder, it's uh, mindfulness, self-kindness, and common humanity. So this is an exercise taken from a talk presented by Dr. Kristen Neff. So um, get yourself comfy. And if you can, I know that I'm a little tiny person on the top of your screen but if you can follow my um, prompts and if you could see my gestures so hold your fists um, if you can see them hold your fists uh, and squeeze them super tight so squeeze 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 um, try and make them as tense as possible and just keep squeezing them. keep going like don't don't give up just keep squeezing them I can do that for a little while so keep squeezing them Tight and even tighter. <sighs> okay, so what emotions does this evoke in you? Keep squeezing them. What does this feel like? So sit here for a moment and try and notice what you feel. Okay, so you might be feeling anger or tension, maybe a little bit of anxiety maybe a little bit light-headed, um, maybe uncomfortable, okay? So notice what, what you're feeling here. doesn't feel good. It's an uncomfortable feeling, right? Okay, so this is what it can feel like um, or be similar to uh, when we are experiencing self-criticism. So the typical mindset when we are experiencing self-criticism and, and these types of feelings are self-isolation. I'm, I'm all alone. Um, I'm the only one that's suffering here. And it, it obviously feels awful. But now open your hands. So you can see I'm opening up my hands. I'm just uh, allowing them to face the ceiling. And just notice here what you're experiencing as well. What do you feel? What are you experiencing? Are you perhaps now feeling bit of relief, maybe some freedom, are you feeling a bit more calm? And sit here in a moment for a little while. So now this can be a gesture of mindfulness. So what happens when we stop fighting what is and we accept? So now we can hold our hands out in front of us like that. Okay. So reach out, put your hands out. What does this gesture invoke in you? So does this feel like an invitation? Um, are you inviting someone for a hug or an embrace? Does it feel maybe even warm, familiar, inviting? So what does this feel like for you? So this could be a gesture of um, common humanity. So we are all in this together. We are embracing each other. And this kind of feels a little bit good, right? Okay, so our last gesture for this exercise is now we take both hands, place them on top of each other, and we place it over our hearts. Okay, 
And we can set your form by a little too. Just taking in the experience. Be curious about what, what you're currently feeling now. So you can notice your breath or your beating heart. And so what's happening right now? What, what kind of feelings and emotions arise for you? Does it feel maybe soft, peaceful, safe? Are you feeling a bit grounded? Are you maybe even feeling a little bit of self-kindness? So this gesture can be what it feels like to experience self-kindness. Okay. So if you want to know what self-compassion can feel like, it's, it's letting go of this and it's opening and accepting ourselves and embracing others. And it's opening our hearts towards ourselves with kindness. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed that experience. Um, that's just a, a quick and short demonstration of what the lack of self-compassion can feel like, but then also what's, what self-compassion can feel like. Um, and you can do this, this exercise um, as many times as you want, whenever you want, um, just to remind yourself um, about mindfulness, self-kindness and common humanity. So um, now that we've explored both the impact of a lack of self-compassion and what self-compassion can feel like, let's delve into how we can use self-talk as a powerful tool to further cultivate and strengthen this compassionate uh, mindset. So we did a couple examples um, in the beginning when we were talking about the three components of self-compassion, but we can go into more detail now. So recognizing and reframing negative self-talk is uh, understanding how you identify negative self-talk and reframe it with compassionate thoughts. So, for example, a negative self-talk might uh, sound like, I failed again, I'll never get better. But if we reframe it with a compassionate talk, we could say, again, this is a difficult moment, but it's part of my journey and I'm learning and growing. Another example could be from a negative uh, point of view, I must be the only one who can't do this. Whereas we, we change a little bit um, and we frame it to a compassionate thought so that there are communities of us and everyone experiences ups and downs. I am just experiencing a down at the moment. So we covered that one already. And then another example is um, from a negative self-talk point of view, this tool doesn't work for me. So we have lots of tools on the program. Um, there are various amounts of different fidgets that we could choose from. So this tool doesn't work for me or this fidget doesn't work. I will never be free from this. Whereas if we reframe it with a compassionate thought, we can say there are many tools that I can rely on. This isn't one of them. And I can try another so if you have some common uh, negative self-talk patterns or phrases or statements that you that you often you know commonly have, you can uh, prepare in advance and you can write down your rephrased uh, or reframed compassionate thought uh, for yourself. And you can always refer back to them. Um, you don't have to particularly memorize them, but you can write them on a post-it or a piece of paper and you know stick them on your mirror and look at them every day. Um, just to help remind yourself or when you are having um, a, a challenge or a difficult experience uh, you can always just refer back to them and remind yourself um, about your compassionate um, self I hope that helps so we are on to our next and last exercise so our second and final exercise for today um I will guide you through practical steps to cultivate self-compassion. So helping you again manage the emotional aftermath of a relapse. So this exercise is going to integrate again the three elements of self-compassion. So um, we're just reinforcing um, what, what we are just talking about. So again, it's the mindfulness, it's common humanity, 
and it's self-kindness. So this is just to help us respond differently to challenges like a skin picking relapse. So again, uh, get comfortable, swish around in your seat. Um, I want you to be as comfortable as possible in your position. And um, if you like, for this particular one, you don't have to watch me. So you're welcome to, to close your eyes. Okay. So I want you to focus on your breath. So taking a deep and slow breath in, in through your nose and out through your mouth. And this will just help you to center yourself. So let's breathe in through our noses. Hold it for a second and out through your mouth. Let's do two more of these. So breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. This is making me feel calm already. And last one, breathe in. Take a moment and breathe out. And throughout this exercise, I don't want you to forget about your breathing, um, but I want it to be as natural as possible. So we're not going to force the breath, okay? But I don't want I don't want you to hold on to your breath. So first, I'd like you to think about a situation or an experience that has been challenging for you. Um, so you can choose um, anything. It can be obviously related to skin picking or not at all. Um, just anything challenging maybe that you've experienced um, today or the last week or just recently. Um, but I want you to decide on something that's um, somewhat difficult, but not too challenging or too overwhelming, particularly for, for this particular um, exercise. Okay. Because I want you to be able to... Um, be ready to explore that in the session. So now I'll take a moment to really immerse yourself in this experience. So get curious about it. So what do you see around you? What is happening? Allow yourself to be truly present in that moment. So take yourself back into that moment that you find challenging. Just explore it a little bit. So now bring your attention to the discomfort or the pain associated with this experience and acknowledge it by saying to yourself, this is a moment of suffering. Or whatever else you want to say to yourself. And this is an act of mindfulness. So we are validating the experience and acknowledging what you're going through. So alternatively, you might even say something like, this is really tough. I'm really struggling right now. But you can use whatever words resonate with you to acknowledge your feelings. And again, by doing so, you're practicing mindfulness by observing your emotions without judgment or catastrophizing or self-criticism. Okay, so now let's remind ourselves that suffering is a universal part of the human experience. So this is where com the common humanity comes in. So you might say to yourself um, in, in a situation or something similar, um, it's normal to experience setbacks. I'm not alone in this. Uh, maybe others also go through ups and downs. So recognize that your experience, while difficult, is something that others have faced too. So this is an act of common humanity, reminding yourself that suffering is a shared human experience. Okay, so 
next you can place your hands again um, as we did in the, the other gesture exercise place your hands over your chest over your heart or in wherever it feels uh, comforting or supportive to you you can even just hold your hands on your lap and you can say to yourself perhaps maybe may, may i be kind to myself this is an act of self-kindness. So offering yourself the same compassion you would give to a, a friend or a loved one. But sometimes initially this can be a little bit difficult. So um, if this feels too difficult for you, you can try imagining you're speaking to yourself um, as if you were a young child in need of comfort. Or even consider what you might say to a dear friend who's going through something similar. So what words of kindness would you offer them? And notice the tone of your voice. Gentle, compassionate. And if you can, now try and direct those same words and that same tone towards yourself. So maybe some of the things you might say could be, I'm sorry, this is so hard for you. I'm here for you. What can I do to help? I'll give you a moment. As you sit here, you can take a moment to observe what arises within you. How are you feeling? What do you notice in your body and your mind? Are you able to feel different to how you first started this, this particular exercise? And again, be curious with those observations. And when you're ready, you can gently lower your hands, allow your breath to continue in its natural rhythm, and you can slowly begin to open your eyes. So I hope you all enjoyed that um, second exercise. I'd love to know, you can let me know in the comments and we'll go through them at the end. So just a reminder of what we've just discussed. Um, so self-compassion is all about, you know, embracing our imperfections. So we can accept that imperfection is a part, is a natural part of you know, being human. For those in the skin picking community, it's easy to feel isolated and believe that everyone else is managing their behavior perfectly or just better while we are struggling. But the truth is, everyone experiences ups and downs. So you might have a day where you successfully avoid picking, but then have a setback the next day. So instead of see seeing this as a, as a failure, we can recognize that it is part of the journey. And we can remember, just as others in the community have their good and bad days, so do you. But what matters is that you continue to learn and grow and support yourself with compassion through every step of your recovery. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody that we have a ton of free resources that are available. Um, we have our blogs, we have our webinars. Um, I think just last week we had a um, really in-depth webinar, particularly on relapses and strong emotions like guilt, um, sh shame and embarrassment. So you can go on our YouTube channel and, you know, refer back to that particular webinar. Um, this might be, you know, great to refer back to after that one. Um, we also, on all socials where we have a lot of we share a lot of information um on our facebook instagram uh, tiktok uh, you know all the different socials there 
We also have a private um, community group on Facebook. So you can uh, look for our Facebook group. Um, it's incredible uh, how amazing and supportive the community is on, on that particular page. Um, so yeah, please take uh, advantage of all the free resources that we have. But also if you have any questions um, or if you need any additional support, um, either, you know, if you have questions about uh, self-compassion or just the program in general, you're always welcome to email us at support at skinpec.com. Um, and we are very good at responding quite quickly. Um, so you can always contact us there. And if you are interested in the program, you can, um, because you've been part of this webinar, you get a hundred dollars discount for your first month. So that's a fantastic um, uh, opportunity. And you can just use the promo code that's displayed on the screen. Um, and if you forget about it, um, you can just email us and I'll give you the promo code again. So that's no problem. Um, so thank you so much for uh, being part of this um, practical webinar um, and uh, doing the exercises with me. I hope, I hope you were able to uh, summon some self-compassion and um, find some relief and comfort. Um, if there are any questions, you're welcome to let me know. Uh, you are more than welcome. Thank you so much for your comment. Um, you can let me know in the chat box. And, but if you don't want to ask um, here, you're welcome to ask any questions, as I said, through the support or customer support channel. We're there to answer all your questions and support you. You're more than welcome. Thank you so much. So thank you, everybody. Um, we hope to see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for all the wonderful messages. Yes, please. Um, you this is going. This is recorded, so it is going to be on our YouTube channel, so you can share it with anyone um, who is struggling, uh, whether it's a, a friend or a family member. Um, you know, you can always go back to it in your own time. So please. Uh, take advantage of all our recordings. Thank you. Okay, if there's no other questions, um, we're going to close the session. Thank you so much for joining again. Um, and you're always welcome to contact us at any other time in the customer support. Thank you. Bye. Yes, there's a question. There's a hand raised. Do you want to write a question in the chat box?